Luca Cordero de Montesmolo is here. While you may not recognize his name, you certainly know his company. As the chairman of Ferrari, he has single-handedly led the resurgence of the classic Italian automobile company. This year, the company posted record sales and is launching a new car, the Enzo. He is also the chairman of Maserati, which Ferrari bought in 1997 and has been successfully reestablishing it in North America. In addition to presiding over the two companies, he oversees a product line that ranges from watches to keychains to perfume. Most notably, however, he is the head of the Ferrari racing team. Their sheer dominance in Formula One has astounded the sports world. This year, they won their fourth straight championship, led by Michael Schumacher, who won his fifth world driving title. I am pleased to welcome Luca Di Montesmolo to this table for the first time, and I hope not for the last. Welcome. Thank you. It's, a, it's great to have you here. Um, this Ferrari team, in all the things that you have done, you've been involved in soccer, you have been involved in, in a range of things in a business career. What does the success of this team mean? Big satisfaction because Ferrari is a mix of Italian flag, of uh, passion all over the world. I tell you a funny story. Last year I said to my secretary, I want a nice picture of Monza crowd, yeah. of the Monza yeah. public. With, and uh, she gave me a huge picture. And I said, there is only one problem. This is Australia race. So we have, uh, not Monza, we have uh, fa Tifosi all over the world. Um, the victory, first of all, is, is difficult to win in sport. But uh, for us, at, at the end of the day, we're a small company to win against the biggest car manufacturer in the world, to win in Formula One, that is a must extreme technologic uh, uh, formula, is a big, big satisfaction. Then, in the life, is difficult to win, and in the sport the same. But to repeat victory for four years is even more difficult. And what does the success of the racing team mean to the success of the company? Um, there is not a direct relation between victory in the races, in racing, and uh, increase in volume, not at all. But it will add uh, fuel on the Ferrari fire, on the Ferrari meat, is important. Yeah. You came there in 1991, having been associated with it before. Johnny Agnelli, the distinguished chairman of Fiat, calls you and says, I want you to take over a company that's in trouble. Enzo Ferrari had been dead for what, three or four years? Four years, yes. You, know, you had been there before. They had not won in a while. They were not doing well. People were worried about whether it would fail altogether. How did you do it? What did you set out to do? to make it what it is today? Try to identify priority goals. I try to give uh, motivation to the people. I try to put uh, the right persons in the right positions with a clear organization in terms of responsibilities and try to push, push passion, creativity, yeah. and uh, particularly in the difficult moment, Go ahead, look ahead. Yeah. But you, you, you give them a poem, yeah. <laughs> new employees, uh, which is remarkable because it talks about enthusiasm and pride and what else? Uh, you know, when you enter in a company like Ferrari, uh, you need uh, to be immediately involved with the culture of Ferrari, with the history of Ferrari. And uh, it's like if you enter in a club, you need to wear it. So it, yeah. enthusiasm, passion, creativity, looking ahead, these are our, this is our culture. You went out to find a driver for the racing team. Why Michael Schumacher? Well, to be honest, uh, uh, I thought on Michael when I know that the team was in good conditions because before even a super driver like Michael was not was not enough to win so at that time I understood that, that all the ingredients to win organization mentality yeah. uh, even team spirit was in good position so a, a good driver can make the difference and he has done the difference yeah. you put together the team first yeah was it easy no not at all what made it difficult I mean, you had people the pressure of the people the attention of the press, the difficult to explain to the people, keep uh, quiet, you have to be, to be patient. We cannot do it in one year because it's step by step 
and also to find the right person and to find the right decision who are the, the young people ready to grow up. So it was difficult and even because of, we have very, very strong competitors. Do you worry about changes in Formula One next year? No. Not to Will do. hinder Ferrari no. success? No. No, I think uh, <laughs> I worry about my competitors, <laughs> not about Formula No, not yeah. at all. You made the decision. It was your call in terms of uh, when it became very controversial about whether Michael would win or whether Ruben would win. Well, I assume Michael. it wasn't your call? No. You didn't get involved? No, I'm involved before. I said, yeah. listen, if uh, uh, when Michael is in the lead and due to the fact that he has a, such a big advantage in the championship, you have to let him win in case. Because, you know, I think that Formula One is basically, as I like uh, to be, a, a team spirit uh, uh, racing sport. The mechanics are very important when you change the tires on the pit stop. So it's so it's important that uh, the drivers can help each other, like in every other sport, for the victory of the team. But was not my my call. But no regrets over the fact that it was done. Uh, no, I regret maybe to how they have done, because it was better to do it a few laps before and not just in front of the... Not make it look so yes. obvious. Yes, correct. <laughs> yes, in a you'd, better way. You'd like to get away with it, yes. but you wouldn't like for it to be yes. so well known. Yes, correct. Yeah. Michael is the best driver in the world. Is he the best ever in Formula By One? By far, yes. Best ever? In my opinion, yes. Since I've been involved with Formula One early 70. Because I've never seen in my life a driver that from the first lap of the race until the last, can be quick like in a qualifying lap, so like in the pole position lap, every time with the same exactly time of the previous, of the previous lap. Mm -hmm. I've seen many quick drives that they do one quick lap, then two medium, then another yeah, one. Right. He's like, pum, pum, Consistent, almost like a machine. Yes, correct. Yeah. Good physical condition, very concentrated and very, very quick. And the best ever in the history of racing. Well, it's difficult to make this comparison in every sport, in the yeah. bicycle, in okay. soccer, because the time is different, the cars are different. But since 1970, in my opinion, yes, the only one close to him was uh, the Brazilian, Ayrton Senna. The man who he succeeded, essentially, as world champion. Yes. Who died in a tragic yes. accident. Yes. Indeed. Which he saw. Which he saw because he was behind him. Yeah. He saw the, the car in front of him yeah. went out suddenly for maybe a, a mechanical failure, and uh, yes. And the interesting thing about that, at that time, Michael was coming up, and he would later yes. succeed. Who's behind Michael? Who's gonna who is going to provide the same kind of push this to Michael? A, this is a good, good question. At the moment, I don't see one. Not Montoya? It's too early to say. Montoya, he's a very talented, very passionate guy, but at the end of the day, he has won just, I think, one race in Formula One, at least two, yeah. so it's too early to say. You've done something else at Ferrari. When you got there, uh, you insisted on a quality of life within the factory. Yes. Tell me about the philosophy you have about manufacturing. This, for me, is a crucial point. I think that work for workers is difficult, is tiring, and why we think very often, oh, we have to improve our offices. Uh, why don't we do a lot for the factories? Mm -hmm. So my idea was three goals. One, dramatically improve the quality of the life inside. What I mean? I mean air condition, I mean light, I mean also a little bit of appealing of the air. Yeah. Because this is important. A comfortable place to be. A comfortable place to be in the place when you enter, you are not unhappy. Second. This gives motivation to the people. They said, oh, my, my company has done a lot for me. I have to do a lot for them. And last but not least, this means, at the end, quality of the product. Because as better, I always say, to do a fantastic, huge product, you need behind fantastic persons and people. So we put the trees inside the factory. We call it Formula Uomo. It's Formula One, now it's Formula Uomo. Trees inside, we put relax area clean, very, very good. Floors are clean? Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, they have to be. <laughs> uh, you, you're going to go public with the company. You can't talk about that, but Ferrari's going to go public? 
I think so next year. I don't know when, it depends a lot of even on the market situation, but the project is to become public and I'm fully in favor of mm -hmm. this. The interesting thing is that GM, General Motors owns a significant yeah. portion of Fiat 20, or whatever it is, 20, 30, I'm not sure what the number is, but they do not own any of Ferrari. No. You know why? Because we are fully owned Ferrari and Maserati by Fiat holding. So we represent a financial investment for Fiat. We have yeah. nothing to do with Fiat Automotive, so nothing to do with General Motors. Ferrari as a company. Um, the brand enables you to do other things other than sell cars. You can sell, you can sell caps, furniture, what else? You have a Ferrari store, yes. you can sell toys. Video games. You want to be in the entertainment business. Yes. You can be in the entertainment business. Yes. You know. Is this just beginning for Ferrari in terms of what you can do with it yes. beyond selling cars? Yes, yeah. yes. Without exceed, because I still think that our biggest patrimonio is a very exclusive mark. But, funny to say, we have two different extreme target of uh, uh, clients. The, the road cars client yeah. and the tifosi, the people. So we have to find something that is good for both of them. Uh, yes, we have done a huge uh, shop. We want to open some uh, big shops uh, with all the Ferrari items for toys, uh, for children, for everybody. And I is, uh, is growing up and I want also to do a small theme park related with technology to let the people uh, become familiar with technology in a funny way. When's the Enzo coming up? Now. Now. It's a huge car. You, but you can't buy it. Why, it's too expensive or because but, well, you don't but, find it? Well, because you can't find it as a waiting list probably, isn't it? No, we decided to build just 400 cars, full stop. Yeah. Somebody's upset, but this is important to keep the exclusivity and also to maintain very, very high yeah. the level of the name. Yeah, but you once said about Ferrari in general, you'd like to sell one less than yes. where the market will demand. Yes. But there are people who've been waiting for two years. Yes, okay, but, uh, two years maybe. Th it's that's enough. a little long. No, yeah. uh, and when we approach uh, three years is too far. But for me, Ferrari has to be like uh, a good-looking woman. You have to desire. <laughs> <laughs> you have to desire. It takes time. Yes, and there are not time. many of them. <laughs> yes, yes. Then it's much and better. if you have one, you're yes, lucky. Yes, yes. You <laughs> and your life really? will be yes. <laughs> much better because of it. And then you it. enjoy. <laughs> What's your favorite? The next one. No, come on. The, no. In terms of for your personal, which one in your Maran garage? Well, my garage is a little bit, my garage, I live in a country place. Yeah. And uh, I love Capri, the island. This yeah. is my, in a country place in the north of Italy. So outside I, of Bologna or somewhere? Yes, yeah, outside right. of Bologna. That is a very nice town. Uh, I have a small Fiat four-wheel drive to go up and yeah, down. Right. I have a Maserati because for me Maserati is a perfect sport car for every day. Yeah. With the um, wife, with the children, you can use every day, but it's a sport car. This is the 3200 GT. Yes, that I love because they've got two seats in the back. Yeah. So it's very, it's a car with a lot of vintage history era, <laughs> but <laughs> that I think yeah. you have seen sometime. But my preferred Ferrari is the 575 Maranello, the 12 Why? cylinder, because good looking, easy to drive, powerful, very classic, engine in the front, I love it. There is this story. You got married, when, a couple of years ago? Yes, three years ago. Three years ago. Um, I, I know what. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think I'm going? About the specific car. That no, I, yes, exactly. Yeah, so, I know, I know. so everybody, this is the, the wedding of Italy. The drivers are Ruben and Michael. They drive the wedding car or something. So Johnny Agnelli has to decide, what does he give his protege who's helped save Ferrari? So he thinks and he thinks and he thinks, what would be right? So he gets a prototype Ferrari for you. Yeah, but the story is nice because when he called, he said, look, I've got a present for you. Can you send somebody to pick up the present in the Fiat garage in Bologna? He said, listen. What kind of Fiat he can give me? I was not so excited exactly. about, to be honest. <laughs> I don't because, need another no, Fiat. Correct. <laughs> I respect. I like Fiat. Yes. And then my driver, my chauffeur, went there and said, "This is a unique car," and for me it was a surprise because to, to make a new Ferrari model to me is not so easy because at the end of the day <laughs> I'm in charge of the company since 12 <laughs> yes. years. And he asked to Sergio Pininfarina yeah. to do 
a special uh, Ferrari for this me. This is a famous a, Ferrari yes, designer. Yes. So there's only one of these in yes. the world. As another one, yes. And another one very nice wedding present. Yeah. When Roberto Rossellini, the Italian uh, movie director, yeah. gave to Ingrid Bergman as a wedding present a unique piece of a Ferrari called Ingrid made by Pininfarina is in yeah. a huge color and now we have launched the color name Ingrid is a gray Ingrid very chic car you love driving I love what is it I mean <laughs> because it's a mix between uh, emotion then I relax is a few moments in which I can really be relaxed I can think I don't like to drive like hell, in, in a nice way, sport way, without exceed. In the country, especially. Yes, and I love go to Tuscany or go yeah, in yeah. an... I like to enjoy car with a nice place. But you want every car that Ferrari makes to be a car that a driver will love to sit in and yeah. will feel the emotion and the passion of okay. being yeah. behind the wheels yes. of something that's Feel special. something, yes. Difficult from to the translate way the, in words. From way the... Yes, turning. the engine, the yeah. gearbox, the cockpit, something together. Ferrari said to be an extreme in every way. It's extreme yes. luxury, it's extreme engines, extreme cars. Extreme Maser price. <laughs> extreme price, especially. <laughs> Maserati is something different. In 1997, it was in worse shape than Ferrari's ever been. It had a great, great tradition. It had been a great, great racing machine. Yes. How can that happen to a company with a proud this is tradition? A strange, uh, things of the life. They won, uh, they have beaten Ferrari in the 60s, they won Indy, right. the, the latest and unique Italian car to win uh, right. Indianapolis 500,000 miles. They won Formula One championship with Juan Manuel Fangio, so big history, big heritage. He was uh, the car of many European presidents of republics, so not only a sport car. Then bad management, not enough passion around, Passion keeps coming back, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. because at the end of the day... Enthusiasm you, and passion. You do this job because you have passion. Exactly. Without this, how can you do it ever? Exactly. Can you make no. it? The same no. is for me. Not a day that I don't look forward to getting up and figuring who's going to be here. Yeah. I think that uh, now Maserati is an important for us, very important, because it's different from Ferrari. It's a, a car that you can drive every day. Is a typical Italian sport Gran Turismo GT car. And it's a car with a lot of history inside, uh, behind, but mo modern, designed by the best Italian designer to Pininfarina and Giugiaro. Right, right. So I think it's a car with a lot of potentiality because it's a car that put together sport, but easy driving, but again emotion. In the beginning, what you want to do is create a car that can compete with Porsche, Porsche BMW. And Jag, yes, correct. Yeah. Absolutely. But that level. But eventually you dream of bringing it back to the racetrack yes but one in formula one is enough different <laughs> yes my program is to race again in 2004 in the gt racing daytona sebring yeah, le mans right, this kind right. of races take a look at this this is a video this is me in a maserati it's a shame we don't have a double seater no. oh yeah, that, yeah i'd do it i'd go with you you know i would and i did Ferrari provided one of the new Maserati road cars they now make, one that uses some of the same technology as the Formula One Ferrari. Basically, you, you have the, the two shifting uh, pedals. One is for up, it's even right, written on right, it, yeah. and one is for down. Yes. And uh, you have six gears available. And is it on the, on the Formula One racer? Is it's it exactly just like the this? Same way, yes. Exactly the same way. Yeah. With Schumacher at the wheel, it is one hell of a ride. I'm fine, I love it. Wow. Especially at 145 miles an hour on Ferrari's test track. This is the most fun I've ever had in a car, I gotta tell you. Talk to me about the poetry of racing, you know, the beauty of it, the feeling of it. It's so, so fine the line where you just stay on the edge and you don't want to be over it you don't want to be below it and and if you if you hit that line that's <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think i think that uh, 
I, 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 I've asked Michael, I was, uh, huh? his co -EKP, he said, very, very good, never scared. I wasn't. Um, but it's, you know, you have confidence in Michael. I mean, yes. Michael knows what he's doing. Uh, to be honest, when I go with him, I'm very, really impressed. He drives in so easy way, controlling the yeah. car in every condition. Very you pointed out to me once that, in fact, if you, what Michael can do every lap, he can approach the limit of what the car can do every time. Correct. Not just one lap. 70 laps. On, so he, he knows exactly where it is. Place, yes. And he will go into that turn faster than anybody. Yes. And that's yes. what makes him great. Yes. Yeah. You know, now we have a, a way to measure the, 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 the competition of the drivers. Yeah. So you can, uh, through a telemetry that is electronic system, we can see where he breaks and in comparison with the other one. Yeah. This is very bad for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about Maserati. See, it's not easy though. I mean, this is a cutthroat, competitive business. We've seen a lot of good companies go by the wayside. They've had to be bought up. They've had to have mergers and conversations. How much money are you going to have to spend to make it competitive? How much money on promotion, on advertising, on making sure you've got the finest assembly line possible Quality. to make sure that you can do it for a price that's competitive with guys that are already there, already have a brand identification, a lot, a lot. Even because starting, as you say, from grass, the only way was to use uh, big name, the heritage of the name, but mm. uh, not the looking like an archaeologic name. In yeah. other words, putting new technology. Yeah. The, this car is brand new, of course, from zero. Engine, gearbox, everything. For us, was very important to use the synergies with Ferrari. That was give us the, the synergy you have with Ferrari. Yes, this was this and, is. And important. how does it work? What do you get from Ferrari other than uh, engines? Lessons learned. Engines, uh, engines approach. We can make one engine in two different versions. One is for Maserati, another one is for Ferrari. We can we gave at the beginning the best uh, in, uh, young engineers in Ferrari to Maserati. We uh, like in United States. We use Ferrari dealers to uh, start with the Maserati activity in the States, in England, everywhere. So many, many, many. and also, and also uh, the possibility to, to have a lot of technical information from Maserati, from Ferrari, and from Ferrari suppliers. How many do you expect to sell, say, in 2003? Um, to be honest, with this situation, I don't want to give you a clear figure. For sure, more than 1,000 that we will sell this year. But I want to keep exclusivity. I don't want to ship over here too many cars. I want to keep the exclusivity. This exclusivity, heritage, and innovation and innovative technology are the three key elements of Maserati. Fiat, the company. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's in trouble, too. Yes. It's in troubles also because uh, there are many companies in, in troubles. And unfortunately, it's in troubles, and this is bad for Italy. This is bad, of course, for Fiat. My only hope is that they can uh, solve, they can, uh, they can uh, find solution to come out from this difficult situation. So the phone rings, and it's Johnny <laughs> Agnelli. And he says, do me one last thing. Do for Fiat what you did for Ferrari. You can't say no. I will you do my best no. to do it, and I always say yes to him, and I will say, I hope you will never fall me, but in case here, I will do my best. Because you owe him much. He's been mentor, friend, what? Yes, I was a mix between uh, a, a brother older than you, yeah. a young father, and a friend, and uh, I t I'm very pleased for the Ferrari success because I feel to give him back uh, what he gave him to me in the difficult moments, saying, wait, let's look at work because uh, we have faced very difficult years. Uh, so he gave you protection. Yes, While important. When, when critics me, were, were jumping at you because they yes. didn't want to give you time, yes. he said, Correct. give him time. Yes. Let him see, let's see what he can do. Yes, and I will never forget it. Yeah. Can you imagine going into politics? Sometime, yes. 
But after five minutes, they say no. <laughs> <laughs> so for five minutes, yes. Yeah, because you've got a, it's a very different life in terms yes. of the, I mean, you've seen the celebrity. It's not my you life. You have the celebrity, but there is a different element of how they, of losing privacy. And you can go away now, but as a politician, you can't no. go away. There is no escape. And also, you know, the biggest difference for my attitude, I like when I arrive at home at the end to say, well, today I've achieved this, 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 I've done something. In the politic, you never touch what you do. It's something, it's not my attitude. It's not my attitude. There was a, po moment, there was a moment before Berlusconi took power See. that he was floating your name as a possible cabinet member. What do you think of him? I think that uh, he has been a fantastic entrepreneur. Very well, yes. That's fantastic. The richest man in Italy. I think that he is that he's, uh, very intelligent and uh, very, very, with a fantastic communication attitude with the people. The clients before office television, the electors now. Uh, sometimes he's, in my opinion, he un, uh, overestimates that he can do everything. He can be the prime minister, the foreign minister, minister, foreign minister. Yeah. I don't know, the chairman of uh, companies sometime. Uh, but I think he's uh, really, really a superman. I think he's... You do? Uh, yes, you think, think he's good for Italy? I think uh, yes, if he understands that uh, he has to put in the right position mm. the best people and, and sometimes that uh, he cannot dream too much because sometimes he has a very good intention then about the polity what we said before is difficult in politics to transfer in operative facts some even good intentions you came here early in your life after law school in rome and spent two years at columbia yes you said it was two of the best years of your life yes yeah. i love your country and uh, as i said before Giannelli, i have to thank a lot your country because i came here as a young boy i started to read the wall street journal i started to uh, understand pop art at that uh, moment uh, Liechtenstein, yeah. jasper john older right. i i loved the, the new york as a creative place but the larger natural space like uh, wyoming idaho yeah. i love that place uh, i've got uh, my first wife was american mm. i still have a flat in new york my dream is to live uh, six months in Italy and six in the States. <laughs> this will be my dream. Yeah, but so you could go to Capri and live in, outside of Bologna. Yes. And still. And Maranello too. And still in the Maranello yes. because Ferrari is the there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And to young Italians who, who might think about business as a career, what do you tell them? What's the excitement of being in business rather than film or art or politics or sports well uh, for me business for the new for the young people has to be something related with a certain attitude not only looking at only result 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 but in a 360 degrees way in other words try to improve yourself every day try to learn from the other people as much as you can try to have look ahead uh, have a very international uh, eyes and uh, then uh, i think business will be automatic in other words i don't like the people coming out from merchant bank or only with the finance experience focalize his attention only how is doing the market today two plus two is my in other words very concentrated just in the figures for me business is something different i'm a look at business with more humanity with more culture with more team spirit the collaborators the project the program then the money will be automatically but before think of the figures you have to have a program you have to to look ahead and you have an open window on the world i think curiosity particularly now with the strong development of technology, the man is becoming even more important in the past. Because you have to drive the technology, you cannot be drive, driven and, by that. And it them. gives you more opportunities to do more things than you ever could have imagined of in course. terms of business. Technology gives some... you, and communications, gives yes. you the capacity. Yes. You know, to, for, Enzo Ferrari once said to you before he died, you know, something, and I've forgotten it for a moment, but it was about success. Yes. What did he say? He said, look, be careful. In Italy, 
maybe not only in Italy. In Italy, uh, you, everybody can forgive you everything except success. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.